In this video, I'm going to show you the new tiling effect in Camtasia, what it is, how to use it, and a cool way to combine animations with it. For this, you'll need the latest version of Camtasia, as this is another new feature starting with Camtasia 2024. If you don't have access to the latest version, I have a link in the description below that'll give you 10% off any Camtasia purchase, subscription, or upgrade. Let's get into it. If you want to learn more about Camtasia, I live stream every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. I show you how I make my videos with Camtasia and I answer any questions you have live. You don't have to be a channel member or be subscribed to my channel to join. My live streams are open to anyone. But if you do subscribe, you'll be notified when I post new videos or when I'm about to go live. So I hope to see you Tuesday and now back to this video. So I've got a sample project open here in Camtasia and I've already got an image imported into the program right here. Let's go ahead and drag that image down to the timeline and let me show you the new tiling effect. Okay, now this will work best if we size this image down a little bit and we can do it one of two ways. We can either reduce the scale over here, okay, or you can simply grab a corner here and make it smaller. If you hold down control while you do that or command on a Mac, you can maintain it in the center. Not that that's necessary for what we're about to do, but uh, Let's just go ahead and make it about that small. We can always change it later. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit longer here. That's about 30 seconds or so. Again, that doesn't even really matter either yet. Um, so to add the new tiling effect, what you do with this highlighted, you go up to, actually you don't even have to have it highlighted, but what you do is you go to a visual effects and here it is right here. If you don't see it right away, it's towards the bottom of the uh, visual effects tab. So scroll down and here it is right here. I believe this is alphabetical order. So T for tiling towards the bottom. Grab it, drag it onto this clip, or you could drag it onto the clip here on the canvas. Either way works on the canvas or the timeline. Let it go and it basically creates a tile pattern of that image. Okay. This works best with, uh, uh, with smaller Images like logos would be a good example. What this is good for, what I plan on using this for, is to create uh, backgrounds. And not just backgrounds, but dynamic backgrounds. Uh, let me show you what we can do with this. So first off, you'll notice there's a couple of handles on the image. We have this vertical line here with a little X here, and also a horizontal line here with an X here as well. And what you can do, let's click this and drag it. Okay, and just kind of move it around. You can see how it affects the placement of these images, these tiled images. Okay, so you can move that, adjust it in as close as you want. Okay, or put it a little farther away, whatever you want to do. And then you can do the same with this one here. It's just two different ways to move the images around. Okay, so let's say, let's say we like that there. Okay. Now, a couple other things you can do, as I mentioned before, you can change the scale after the fact. So currently this scale is at 7.9%. So it's, it was quite a large image to begin with, um, but you can click to drag this, make it larger or smaller. And if you find that a little hard to do, you can actually type in here. So let's go ahead and type in six. Okay, that, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, something else you can do is you can rotate these. Uh, the one, so I mean, you could rotate around the Y or the X axis, but that's really just going to kind of skew it like that. That's the Y and here's the X. Okay. But what makes more sense, I would think would be the, the Z axis here. So you can rotate it like this if you want. Okay. Right there, let's say. Okay. So that's, those are the properties. That's how you can uh, modify this. Now, what I see myself using this for is a nice background. So to dress up this background even further, what we can do is go up to annotations and uh, under shapes, I'm going to scroll down here. I've already got it highlighted. Here is a rectangle shape. I'm going to click and drag that onto the canvas. Now we can't see it because, uh, or can it, maybe it's just the coloring. Let's put it behind, let's put it over here where we can see what we're doing and put the playhead here. Okay, so here it is. Let's click and resize this to cover the entire image. Okay. And now let's put it over here, drag it out like that. And there you go. So that's, if it were in front, 
then it would basically hide all of the tiling effects. So you want to put it below your tiling image in the timeline, okay, so that you can see the tiling image. And that gives you a background. Then of course you can come up here to the properties of that annotation and you can change the color, you know, to whatever color you want. Okay, so that's one way you can modify the background. Uh, something else you can do is use a dynamic background. So let me just move this up and create some space. I'm not going to bother deleting that one. But if we go over to visual effects, no, I'm sorry, we'll go over to media. Okay, and we'll, we'll click on this, uh, the second icon, Camtasia assets. And that's where we find dynamic backgrounds. So let's just click and drag one of these down here. Okay, it'll take a minute to load, but there you go. It's loaded. I'll stretch it out to be the same length in the timeline. And you can see what happens when you drag the playhead across the timeline. Okay. That is a nice dynamic. Dynamic meaning the colors are changing. That's what is making this one dynamic. Um, nice dynamic background. Now what you might also want to do if you, if you find these logos are just a little too bright um, and you want to make it a little uh, dimmer, uh, you can just reduce the opacity. We'll make sure the logo is selected and reduce the opacity of the logos. You see that? You can turn them right off if you want or just have it a little bit, uh, just a little subtle in the background and you can get that kind of effect like that. One last thing I'm going to show you and I think this is really going to bring it to life is why don't we get those logos moving, okay? And the way you do that is you go up to animations, drag a custom animation down onto the logo, okay? Let's stretch it out so it's pretty much the entire length. Okay, like that. And let's go ahead and move it. So we'll click the center here. So now we have the playhead at the end of the animation. Okay, so now let's just click and move this. Let's say we want to move it like this over to there. All right, I will click that to unselect it, drag the playhead back. And now there's the dynamic background that we have. Now one thing I'd want to make sure of, and I think our settings are okay, is I'm going to right click this animation, check the easing, and I just want to confirm that none is on. Otherwise, if you had some easing in this, like exponential in and out, then that motion will start off really slow, speed up, and then it'll end really slow, okay? So just to make sure, I, I think I would want to use this with just a constant rate of speed. Uh, so I would choose none. Whoops, I hit auto there by mistake. Let's right click and click on none. Okay, and then this is what we have. Okay, just a nice subtle background. So now let's say we had a video here. Let's go ahead and just import a video just like this. This is just a video I made uh, a trailer of one of my live streams. Uh, and let's just really quickly size this down. Okay, we can size it down like that. We could also go to visual effects and let's go to, where is it here? I'm looking for the circle mask right here. The mask, we'll drag that on here. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, we'll reposition, wait now, we'll reposition it like this. Okay, so now we have we have basically a video with a, with a background. We might even want to dress this up even more you know, we could give this, um, we can give it a border like this. Uh, let's turn alpha on so the border is just around the mask part, just like that. Okay, then maybe give it, uh, I don't know, a drop shadow like that. All right, so now we have a video that looks like this. On editing videos for YouTube using Camtasia. Today's show will be all pretty cool. That is how you use the tiling effect. Do you want more tips like this? Let me know in the comments below. Or come join me on Tuesdays in my live stream. I live stream every Tuesday at 1 o'clock Eastern here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.